Hello, uh, my name is Andy McCarran at, uh, S and I'm the MD at SBC. I have uh, got with me today uh, Shai Segev, who's the CEO of the newly rebranded Entain, uh, formerly known as GVC. Um, last night, uh, congratulations, you picked up the Socially Responsible Sportsbook of the Year at the SBC Awards. I assume that's the highlight of your year so far. Yes, thank you, Andrew. Uh, great to be here. And it's clearly this is uh, a very important award for us. One of the things that, uh, as you uh, uh, probably followed uh, this morning of us relaunching our new corporate identity under Entain, we put two big pillars. One of them is around sustainability and another thing is about growth. I'm sure we're going to talk a lot later about growth, but if we touch already about sustainability, Clearly, responsibility and being social responsible operator is a very, very important part of our pillar. And I'm very proud that we already seen that we make a good progress on that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that you guys have, have, have really stood out for in this year. And um, you're not resting on your laurels because um, you've also announced, you know, as, as, as part of the whole rebranding and the new strategy, you've got this advanced responsibility and care program. I assume you presumed uh, referring to it as ARC. Um, yep. And you've got some propriety safer gambling technologies that you use to support that. Can you tell us, can you tell us a bit more about um, how ARC's going to work? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, Andrew. And as I mentioned, I mean, again, it's part of our sustainability pillar. Uh, responsibility is one of the key things. And we are in a, in a position that uh, we are in a unique position that we are probably one of the only operators who control the full technology. We provide the full technology and all the touch points that we have between ourselves and our customers. And this gives us the ability to have a better insight and better understand our customers. And clearly we can take this thing and we are taking this thing into a better customer experience in terms of providing better content to our customers. But we also have the opportunity to use this data to make a more uh, safer uh, uh, journeys as well. And this is exactly what ARC is all about advanced responsibility and care. And what we're trying to do is we're trying now to uh, uh, develop algorithms that will tell us probability of players to, uh, to have a potential uh, harmful behavior while using our products. And if we have that, we will interfere and engage with this customer, make sure they're setting the right controls. And in extreme cases, we set controls for them as well. We onboard two professors, to help us on this, people who have uh, quite a lot of experience. Uh, Professor Griffith is one of them. Uh, we have 25 years of experience uh, of problem gambling and addiction to help us to develop these algorithms. And, and again, this is a clear priority for us. And, and the reason for that is that we believe that, again, we need to build this industry uh, to become a long-term sustainable industry. And this is the only way we can do that. Sure, yeah, no, I, I, I know. I've followed Mark, Mark Griffiths' um, um, uh, coverage of gambling since I started in the industry, which was um, back in 1998. So, um, yeah, he's, he's got a, a very good handle on, on gambling and addiction, in, certainly in the UK. I mean, with, re with regards to this, um, this programme, how do you balance the social responsibility side of things with your global growth strategy? I mean, it's very simple. I mean, I don't see these things as conflict at all, as I mentioned to you. I mean... Uh, for us, building value for our shareholders, building this industry in the long term, it doesn't mean that we need to maximize every penny in the short term. It means that we need to maximize our potential in the long term. And for us to being able to identify, uh, again, uh, uh, from the gamblers or arm, it, it, it is a priority. Uh, again, maybe I'll mention it even in a mobile way. I mean, one thing we put very clearly as a strategy, I put it a very bold strategy, to our employees, to all of our stakeholders, is that we don't want to take even one penny from people who cannot afford uh, to spend this, uh, because this is not the right thing to do, and uh, and this is definitely not what we should do, and uh, we should do everything we can in order to, to prevent that. And I believe that this all harmful span is also harmful to our business as well. This is why actually these things are quite aligned for us to provide a fun and safer products and environments, it's actually, it's, it's, it's actually what will determine, it's what will enable us to go to, to continue grow our business even further. And we are in a unique place 
as I mentioned before, that we have all of these building blocks to, to provide that. And um, I believe on the long term, this thing will pay off for us even more, especially if you look into our growth opportunities, where we have so many opportunities to grow our business, not just in the UK, outside the UK, in many, many other markets which are regulated in the US, of course, expanding to new audiences and leveraging our brands and technology into other regulated markets, which are currently we are not uh, operating. I mean, part, part of the reason um, you've, you've rebranded is again to to show this new um, this new vision, this new uh, corporate direction for the company. Um, I mean, you you became CEO in the summer. You've got a new a new chairman. You've got a new executive leadership team and this corporate charter. I mean, is is it a complete transformation from what GVC were doing, or is it just, is it an evolution? Uh, it's a partial uh, transformation, or uh, you can say it, it's a, a strong evolution. Um, I mean, probably the the main pillars that come in strongly now is, is the sustainability one. I mean, we as GVC has been for a long time uh, uh, quite uh, uh, driving quite a lot of growth and, and value creation uh, with our with our shareholders. I think probably the, the biggest switch that uh, we've been doing, it's probably a journey we started to took two years ago. And again, my appointment as CEO accelerated and I've been even more bold on these things is to do a further investment into our technology to become a much more tech driven business, not only make sure that we have the products which are suitable to our customers today, but also product that will be suitable for them also for the future. And we can touch it later as well, if you wish, and uh, to see how sport interactive sport and sport entertainment uh, future is and I will be the best position for that focusing on only on regulated markets and we uh, came with a quite bold announcement which by 2023 we will be 100% regulated and this is our plan and do whatever it takes to invest in responsibility and again we just touched about ARC which is it's a strong pillar for us uh, and this is probably the, the, the biggest differentiator where we put these things in front uh, uh, today which this is, I believe, the right foundation for a healthy, sustainable business, which enable us to do all of this growth uh, engine that I mentioned as well, which will enable us even to double or triple our business in the next five years. I mean, you've also in introduced um, social responsibility metrics into people's um, remuneration as well, haven't you? Yes. So we're probably one of the only companies who both exact and pretty much the all employees in the, in the organization will be bonus spent on uh, responsible gaming KPIs. I mean, you, you touched upon your growth and um, how, you, how you can uh, use the uh, sustainability um, charter to to help promote that. I mean, the US is obviously a big focus for the sports betting industry at the moment. Um, you've you've been um, teamed up with MGM, with uh, your bet, bet MGM uh, branding, and you've just moved into Pennsylvania and Tennessee. Uh, believe, I mean, I believe your rollout with the, in, in Tennessee was one of your more successful ones yet. Um, you're, you're still quite bullish uh, on the US and you, you're wanting to be number one. How are you, you going to uh, get there? So um, we've been quite, probably we've been quite, uh, we've been quite uh, late to uh, within our uh, investment in the US. I mean, we really started our investment probably like 12 or 18 months ago. We had made already quite big investment before. But if you look into our progress in the last 12 months, we're probably the most uh, growing brand for taking the most market share uh, in the US. Uh, I'm, and I'm very, again, proud and very happy that uh, uh, all of this investment and the building blocks that we're building in the US is now paying off. I think we, I, I think we're safe to say now that we are a clear number three in terms of market share in the US today. Um, but we also clear to see that we are probably the most growing one and we are the one taking the most market share. And if you see again, New Jersey is a good example. We are the largest iGaming operator in New Jersey with more than 23% uh, market share in New Jersey iGaming, which is mm -hmm. the biggest product in the biggest uh, estate, which is again, it's symbolic, but it's very important to show the scale and the ability that we have. West Virginia, we also made the, a good progress in Colorado and in Indiana. Nevada, we just launched a new product, so I think we're going to get uh, even more uh, market share. And Tennessee, which probably one of our recent launches, as you mentioned, we launched in Tennessee. We were first to market, which I think it's it's a very important uh, key of the success. We launched on day one in Tennessee uh, together with two other operators. 
Uh, we were quite aggressive from day one in terms of marketing. Our products are much more mature now because again, when we launched 12 months ago and when we launched today, we already localized the product to the local, local markets. Our teams are now much more also know how to use the products. They are more bonds. Remember again, Bell MGM is pretty much a new entity which has just been built over the last 18 months. So it's a new team. It's already 300 people uh, based in New Jersey. The team now is much more bond, know better how to work. And all of these points are coming together. Our integration with MLife, which is a very key uh, competitive advantage that we have, is getting better as well, meaning uh, people who have the MLife program uh, and our loyal MGM customers are now have more incentive to become a bad MGM and should be continuous of the same journeys. Our integration with Yahoo and Yahoo Sport is also a much more uh, integrated journey as well. So all of these ingredients are now starting to come together and we see it paying off and we've seen a very successful uh, uh, launch in Tennessee and I would expect us to become a, a, a big operator with a, a significant market share in Tennessee. Looking forward for the numbers to be published at some point. I mean, you, you just touched upon New Jersey there about you being the sort of leader in the gaming side of things. I mean, there's, there's a lot of focus on the sports betting rollout, but what's what's happened with that is on the coattails has been more of an online gaming rollout as well. And I guess you're, you've got far more experience on the online gaming side than um, some of the other uh, brands that have been, um, that you're competing with, shall we say. So I guess that gives you a competitive advantage against those as the online gaming markets open up as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, again, if you're looking to entertain we're a global business, we bring quite a lot that uh, can be uh, a big advantage for us in the US market. And it's, again, this is the reason we're making probably probably a better progress than others in this market. We operate in uh, more than 20 uh, uh, markets outside the US. We've been operating for more than 15 years. Um, and we have all of this, again, all of these products. Again, we own our own technology, which is include our uh, online sport betting platform. All of it is in-house, including the trading tools, we have our own casino platform as well uh, with Party Casino uh, as a brand, which we operate out, uh, as well. We have uh, uh, our bingo platform, which is in the UK. We operate Foxy Bingo and Gala Bingo. We have poker, we own Party Poker. So we have pretty much the full portfolio of sport betting and iGaming technologies and brands. And then we have all of the operational expertise as well, because we know how to operate poker. We know how to operate bingo. We know how to operate casino and iGaming and sport betting. So we have all of this knowledge, Noah, which put us in a really strong place in the US to make sure that uh, uh, this knowledge is being transferable, our technology is there, our operational Noah is there. Again, you add on it the market access and the MLife and the Yahoo uh, customer base, and you put it together and, and you're getting into this where we are today, which we are uh, a strong uh, growing brand in the US. And I think we can even bring more. We are now bringing more as well. I mean, uh, I mean, both to mention that again, uh, we being the most uh, social responsible operator, we bring also our resp responsible technology in as well. We also launch foundation now, uh, uh, which is the Intent Foundation with a commitment for 100 million pounds going to good cause uh, over the next five years. Some of it will go clearly to the US market as well. Uh, which we already announced some partnership with some organization. Epic is one of them uh, uh, to be able to uh, provide uh, uh, to athletes uh, training on sport integrity. So uh, we will continue investing in these things. Sure. I mean, I mean, this your whole sustainability um, vision is underlined in the US because you've you've been taking the lead on the social responsibility side with the um, what was the GVC Foundation and the Entain Foundation. Uh, how how has the rest of the market sort of responded to the, the push you've been doing in the US? Yeah, I, I think very well. I think again we're doing the right thing, and as, as I mentioned, for us, uh, it's feel natural to do this thing, right? I mean. We want to make sure that uh, we're entering into a market. We will do it in other markets as well. We announced it also. We're doing it in Australia. We're doing it also in Germany. We clearly have a big, uh, a big investment we're doing in the UK uh, with the pitching in as an example uh, initiative as well that we are funding the the Trident uh, leagues as well. So we're doing a lot. And again, for us, it's really natural. It's part of of us bringing back to communities as well. So um, again, we want to make sure that again, we are here not for this year that or next year, we want to business will be there for the next 20 years, we want to double or triple our business. And for us doing it is not just 
growing the business fast, which clearly it's a business objective, but also growing it in a way that people trust us and building the reputation, working with our communities and making sure uh, uh, we're building a long-term sustainable business. And Costa potential isn't just the US, albeit that's quite a, um, a focused market. Um, there's also uh, LATAM, um, and you've, yesterday you launched in Colombia. I mean, could you could tell us a bit more about um, uh, how how you got to launch day and, and, and what your plans are in that market? Yeah, so uh, we've been looking into uh, expanding our business uh, beyond uh, the US. I mean, clearly the US is uh, a very uh, important market, probably will be the biggest market uh, uh, for the, the biggest sport betting and high gaming market in the world probably the next five, 10 years. Um, if you exclude the US, uh, there are probably, we are operating in other 20 regulated markets. There are probably other 60 regulated markets that you can get a license and uh, you can use our brands, our technology, our know-how and we see ourselves as a global business and we want to expand on them. And Latin America is uh, one of these continents that we believe that, uh, again, our brands, our technology is very relevant and it can be a very interesting market. So we applied for a license. We started to work with the Colombian uh, uh, regulator probably more than a year ago. Uh, we granted the license a few weeks ago. And as of from earlier this week, we launched BWIN into Colombia. I believe that it's going to be an important market. Clearly, again, as we're bringing things to the US and to other markets as well, I believe that we can bring um, a lot of excitement into the Colombian market as well, allow people in Colombia to bet with a regulated, safe operator, uh, which provide great products, great trust, great excitement in a safe way. Um, and yeah, this will be an interesting market for us. No, definitely. I mean, the other big uh, Latin American market that people have been, the industry has been waiting to go live is, um, well, to at least at least um, sort the regulation out is, is in Brazil. Um, how, do, how do you see the Brazil market um, developing? Uh, you know, what, what does what does the country need to do to sort of make itself a successful iGaming jurisdiction? So we've been uh, operating in Brazil for, for some years now, and we probably we are one of the larger or if not the largest uh, sport betting operator uh, in Brazil with a sporting bet uh, uh, brand and with the bet uh, brand. Um, Brazil itself is going through a process of uh, regulation. And this process has been going now for, for some time and we hope it will conclude next year. And if not in 2022, we believe that this is the timeline. Uh, we've been working very closely with the authorities in Brazil in order to provide our input, to lobby, and uh, we, we hope that uh, this will end up in regulation. Um, and yeah, it's a great market, Brazil. Uh, and again, uh, other than Brazil, I mean, there's probably other opportunities in, in the Latin America continent, which we are looking it as, into it as well. I mean, Mexico probably is the other uh, market which would be quite interesting. We're looking to enter into Mexico as well. Probably the best way to do it is through partnerships. So we're looking into some local partners that will fit our culture, will fit our belief as well, to make sure that when you go into a market, you build the best customer experience that you can, and you create uh, 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 an exciting and safe uh, uh, environment uh, for customers. And once we identify that, that, that partner, we will enter to the Mexican uh, uh, market as well. And I think Latin America in general can be an exciting uh, 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 continent. And I see Entain, as a leader in this market as well. No, it's, it certainly is a vibrant market. I mean, as, as you know, we have our, our Spanish language news site, uh, Noticias, um, SBC Noticias, uh, covering that market. And there's, there's never there's never a shortage of news stories and developments to, to cover at the moment, that's for sure. Uh, one of the other things in your key drivers that you've mentioned is um, your existing markets, you, you, your core markets, you still think there's substantial room for growth and you've, you've got a, f a focus on that. I was wondering if you had any particular markets in mind, because obviously you've got places at the moment like Spain, Italy and the UK, where there's a bit of a regulatory backlash and the thought is that the markets might actually contract. I just wondered it, um, what, what your what your core markets, um, what who which ones out of your core markets you're, you're anticipating to uh, get a bit, bit more of a market share? 
I believe all of them will grow, to be honest with you. I mean, again, we will grow in this market as well. I mean, again, we have uh, in 10 years now 19 consecutive quarters of online double digit growth. We've been growing more than 10% for 19 consecutive quarters, and probably this quarter will be now our 20th as well. So, our business on digital and online uh, has been going very well for some time now. Um, and I believe this will continue. And the reason for that is that, uh, again, in many of the countries you mentioned, uh, although the, the country is getting more mature, it's still the internet penetration, the sport betting penetration is still not mature enough for this to stop growing. So again, I think we mentioned it sometime that uh, um, in 90% of our revenues are coming from markets which are growing more than 5%. Uh, and again, it's not only we're growing with this market, we're actually excelling. We're taking market share in this market. We're taking market share in the UK. We're taking market share in Italy. We're taking market share in Australia. We're taking market share in Spain, all of these markets. Clearly, Germany is an example, another example. I mean, there is, a, I think Germany just got regulated uh, earlier this year with the tolerance policy uh, for white gaming and with this new sport licenses as well. In a way, we rebase our uh, revenues from Germany. And I think from, from that point, after you base it, there is a tremendous growth opportunity in this, this uh, market of Germany. So I think for us, into our core business itself, I wouldn't expect anything less than a double digit growth for the future, for the core business. Uh, and this will be combined of us growing with the market because this market are still growing and, and, and us excelling it and taking even market share from others as well. And the fact that we can do it is because we have the best products and the best customer service and the best ecosystem that provide customer and better engagement with us, know that they are betting in a safe environment with, with great products and they staying with us longer. Excellent. I mean, I've got, I don't want to take, uh, take your time any much longer. I've just got one, one more question. I mean, one of your things uh, in your corporate charter was one of your objectives is to get the top workforce talent. And something we noticed and we get feedback about the US market is because it's such a new market, the, 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 talent, net, the talent pool there is much shallower than it is in Europe. I'm uh, just wondering how much, um, how much of an issue that is when growing into these new markets to be able to recruit um, really top level talent if, if the, the employment pool is, is quite shallow at the time? Yeah, I mean, clearly people is, uh, I mean, people is, is the most important asset that we have in our business. I mean, no doubt about that. I did mention about our ability to take further market share in our core market, our ability to lead in the US, our ability to uh, continue and penetrate and, uh, and expand to new markets, either organically or through m &A, our ability to go and expand to new categories, our ability to invest in the technology and uh, to go further uh, in terms of future experiences as well. And all of this great stuff we wouldn't be able to do without the right talent and the right people. So it's all about people at the end. Um, and clearly one of the things we've been doing always in intent is developing talent. And for us, I mean, I spending a lot of my time try to make sure that we're finding always the right people to do the things in terms of both promoting people internally. I mean, I'm a good example. I was promoted internally within, within the business. I think to be able to identify talent and to give them uh, the opportunity to do even more is one of the unique things that you have in our business as well. And I think people work for us. I think they really appreciate the fact that they have this, this opportunity. Our culture is also very open as well. We let people again to make sure that they feel they're making a big difference. And this is one of the intent uh, culture pillars as well. And back to the US, I mean, again, there's a lot of uh, very smart and very talented people in the US. Clearly the online uh, gaming industry pretty much did not exist in the US. Uh, so it's very hard to find experienced people with this specific category in the US, but it doesn't mean that they are not uh, very good and talented people. And then what we build in Bad MGM, we actually, again, we use a mix, and this is what we're doing pretty much in many businesses. We use a mix of, uh, of the team. Some of the people within uh, Entain actually relocated to New Jersey and bringing their experience. We took some of the talented people from MGM and clearly we recruited a lot of people externally as well. And this is bringing us this mix that I think giving us today to become within Bad MGM, a leading operator in the US. Fantastic. Shai, congratulations on your award. Yesterday it was uh, very well, very well earned. Thank you very much for your time today.
appreciate. Bye. Uh, good luck. Bye bye now.